Right, today we are fitting these brake discs to a Spitfire 1500. Hello, now many of you will already know about our Fast Road Spitfire 1500 project and today's job is to fit these rather lovely drilled and grooved brake discs. And here's what you're going to need. We've got a stub axle, we have a nut and a washer for that. We have some grease for the bearings. We have new bearings. There are two each side at the front. There's an oil seal. We have a water seal, a dewasher, the castle nut, a split pin, and of course the brake disc. Now, before you start, you need to fit your hub to your brake disc. But before you can do that, you need to fit your wheel studs to the hub. That's because it's very tricky to get them in when they're so close to the brake disc. Now, these are a little larger than standard. We've gone for uh, Land Rover Freelander studs because uh, they give a little bit more length here, a bit of more distance here that we can use to fit larger alloy wheels in the future. And you can also see that we've already tapped in the bearing races on both sides. OK. OK, first to go on is our stub axle. Now, it's different at each end. You need to make sure you get the, the right way round. Outside of the car, you want the bit with the hole in for the split pin. So you need to put it in the other way. And that goes all the way through the steering arm. And we need to put a washer and a nut on the back of that. Okay, we'll tighten that up later. We then need our water shield. Now to fit our bearings, we need to put in some grease. Onto the bearing races. And pop our bearing in. Put a little more grease over the top. Same on the other side. We then need to tap in our oil seal. Uh, it just fits over there like that. You have to be very careful how you tap this in. And we need a little bit more grease over the top of the felt part of the oil seal. Not too much. And then we can put our disc on, being very careful not to damage the felt oil seal or to push out the bearings. Once that's on, you can then put on the D washer, which I've already got in there, and then the castle nut. You want to tighten the castle nut enough that the wheel won't wobble but not too much that the wheel won't spin freely. And don't forget to do the same on the nut at the back of the stub axle too. Um, you should find torque settings in your manual or online. Once in position, you can fit the split pin through the hole in the stub axle and bend it over so that it can't come out on its own. I hope that was useful. Bye for now.